<laughs> sex toy business, right? Of course, like so why, why, why sex toy? Yeah, why what's the market? Yeah, what's the why? problem? Why? Okay, yeah. okay. So we are saying that we are uh, problem solvers that get paid, right? Mm. Very important. <laughs> when COVID happens, right? Everyone stuck at home, right? Cannot go out, right? Cannot go with boyfriend, girlfriend. Some is single, right? Cannot go out, uh, find new girlfriend. Cannot go date, right? What do they do at home, right? Yeah, ah. and then you got the internet. <laughs> this is Andrian and this is Ray. Welcome to the Talk Live podcast. Every two weeks, we'll invite a new guest and in every session, we'll dig into the life, relationships, and perspectives. One question at a time. Let's talk love! Yay. Mm. I just wanted to, um, because you actually covered the question that I wanted to ask, right? Because uh, it's more like, okay, when you're actually pitching an idea to an investor or for potential funding, right? Because you touch on, oh, whether you need a product out there, a proof of concept out there, and then you sort of say, I think uh, it's sort of yes, but you do it in a smart way to quickly validate it. And yeah. I think like when you mentioned, you know, uh, pre-book it to validate idea, I think there's platforms like long time ago, Indiegogo, right? Indiegogo? Uh, there's Indiegogo, uh, there's uh, yeah. uh, so many, like right now there's yeah. a Kickstarter. Kickstarter. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kickstarter. 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 Kickstarter, that's the one. Yeah. 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 I don't know why I thought about Indiegogo, but... <laughs> no, I But Kickstarter, you really think they really have the product? <laughs> Yeah, so there's a lot of pro, pro, projects out there that, you know, um, upfront, if you subscribe early, VIP list, and then with this kind of stuff, and then you go to investor, even though you haven't come off anything, it's a very quick way to validate your market, the problem you're solving, etc. And uh, yeah, I want to add in this part also is that uh, we are all living in the world of social media, right? There are many entrepreneurs that they started their business off social media pages. All they do is just take pictures of you know certain things that they want to niche in, and they build an audience first before they actually introduce a product. Mm. So it could even start that way. It, most 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 people are influencers mm. or maybe they just you know a, a specific lifestyle you know like you you are a tech guy or you review tech and stuff like that and then you will find that you know one day that a specific kind of tech uh, is something that people is you know is buying is going crazy yeah. then you can actually start a business out of that yeah that's a that's a it's interesting that you brought that up because that's actually a large group of people growing of course it's increasingly tougher and tougher to create your you know social media presence it's just getting more competitive right yep yeah but it's rightly pointed out it's one quite actually very lucrative way right yep. they build a brand image credibility a following and then normally they have what merchandise and design does it solve a problem maybe not but at the end of the day like people are willing to pay so it's a successful business model it has created a community people are willing to pay for your brand and follow you as a person so you yourself as a brand etc so just really good points uh, there too and I yeah I think you guys at one point were were doing these kind of stuff and since Alden talked about the you know repackage you know th buying things drop shipping kind of concept right and I know that you guys you know explored and ventured I think you guys are still doing it and it's yes, money making it's on Shopee yeah, yeah. it's, yeah, it's, passive basically, income. it's huh. basically a sex toy business so <laughs> why don't Eddie can you just share you know this whole idea yeah I, I, I think that I think right? I think uh, Alden can share that I, I want to talk a little bit about this about uh, what investors is looking for mm. on this mm. but maybe this one uh, I'll give it to Alden <laughs> sex toy business right of course like, so what, you, why, what? why sex toy yeah, what's why the market toy? what's yeah, the why? problem why? okay yeah. okay so we are saying that we are uh, problem solvers that get paid right mm. very important <laughs> when COVID happens, right, everyone's stuck at home, right? Cannot go out, right? Cannot go with boyfriend, girlfriend. Some is single, right? Cannot go out, uh, find new girlfriend. Cannot go date, right? What do they do at home, right? Yeah, ah. and then you got the internet. <laughs> yeah, and then you got the internet. So what do you do, right? People, <laughs> you need to relieve themselves technically, right? So because of watch that, talk la la, shut <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> so because of that right you see I, I, I've seen this trend and I begin searching online right and I realized like Google Trends or what that kind of particular sex topic has been going up and we all yeah. know it, it was it was crazy okay uh, when when we saw the data right is there's there's only two paths to this video either we do it or we watch someone else do it yep. there's only these two paths to go so I mean it, when it first started okay lah uh, for some of you who do not actually have enough money, right? 
what I told you just now, pre-sale, right? <laughs> you just do it, all right? Order it from China. But sometimes you may may not may go in a more conventional way. You buy something from China, which is technically cheap. You buy from China. I wouldn't say cheap as well. You start off by testing out, see whether or not people has this demand. You buy a small quantity, three, four, five uh, amount. Then you start selling it on, for example, Malaysia and Shopee, right? You start to sell. And I can tell you if it's something new and it's, coherent to their needs you will definitely have a buyer one and i can tell you something from shopee right people purchase because of reviews right right it doesn't matter who buy right mm. you buy if you buy you help me review you help me review I, so I, you create I, your I, own I, reviews I, 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 yeah but, okay um, okay okay <laughs> you are not creating your own reviews here someone else is creating your reviews for you you're just asking for help right yeah. so this is not saying that you are creating fake reviews you know this is saying that you're getting the metrics out there to 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 prove people that this is a, a real purchase okay you must really go and deliver the product but what's inside may not be actually the product like this is a secret okay but the mm. truth over here that i'm trying to say is that you need a little bit of advertising and what's advertising it's also same thing it's just in this case is i call it review checking but once a real customer really purchase don't don't take the money and run lah. This one you cannot. It's not. It's yeah. not sustainable. What for? You are going to take the money and run right when you can grow a real business. The real review, right? Asking you to purchase, asking you to purchase, is actually to test your capabilities as a business to see whether or not you know the process. Yeah. No one will say no on that as well. I have to. I have to add this thing inside. You know, when uh, we are talking about raising funds, uh, most entrepreneurs start raising funds from family and friends. Yeah. So doing this product is your first round from your family and friends. Yeah. Trust me. If your family buys from you and they continuously buy, you got a product. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the time, they buy once and oh, the product true. you it, it doesn't work for them. Uh, yeah. they ain't gonna buy it again. Okay, yeah. so, technically, <laughs> how painful as it is, right? Your family is the biggest test factor. If it's not family, then friends, uh, Maybe yeah, definitely. Maybe sex product a little bit too much, like, right? <laughs> <laughs> but friends, right? Technically, you just ask them to purchase. It actually train yourself to yeah. actually. If, do the process then really real people will purchase oh this one got five reviews five people purchase uh. then six seven eight nine ten and the rest is history lab your 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 store will get more sales and stuff like but what i'm trying to say here is that you really have to try something and if it doesn't work doesn't work lah. but if it does work you only go up right if it doesn't work you, if you think of this if you lose you lose your initial investment one thousand Okay, one thousand. But if it succeed, you earn how much? Re- yeah. Recently, we've got a, a sustainable uh, business on this particular sex toys. Uh, it pays not a lot because this is just one a small side hustle. About hundred thousand a month. Ah, uh, no, sorry, hundred thousand a year without me doing pretty much. That's a lot, man. Yeah, hundred thousand is like two hundred thousand Hong Kong dollar. Hundred thousand yes. ringgit. Yeah. So this is an example. If you have not taken that step, you may not see the hundred thousand. But if you lose, you lose one one thousand. Yeah. So. I mean, it lose, then just close down the store. Ah. Right. So, uh, that's, why, that's why I really like these guys, right? They really thought, you know, the hustling side. And okay, if you really want to structure, come out of a framework and think about this, right? It's actually like just simple investing. What's the risk reward ratio? If you think about that. So Elden is saying like the risk is like, um, yeah, losing that initial capital, which is 1,000 ringgit, 2,000 Hong Kong dollars. It might seem a lot, but... The upside, 10x, 100x, I think right now it's 100x. Yeah, thank you. So it's like investing into Bitcoin long time ago. <laughs> and then now you're saying, ah, oh, I should have invested, but you never did it. So that's not really counted, but just to give an idea, like, oh, structurally thinking about things, the risk reward uh, ratio of things, yeah. Really nice amazing. that you said Bitcoin, huh? So for you guys out there, right? You guys miss Bitcoin, right? Uh, Bitcoin is cryptocurrency, correct? Yeah, you miss Bitcoin, so what? There are other things coming up and keep an eye on that. So, those are the things I would say. If you lose maybe a hundred, imagine you buy one hundred Bitcoin for hundred dollars, right? Now you probably be a so much millionaire already. Yeah. I mean, so much money right yeah. now, right? Yeah. There are other projects yeah. out there that probably only cost only hundred for one hundred. So why aren't you looking at that? So this is yeah. something that you guys should take a look as well. Uh, it's the future, lah. Web three is the future. Uh-huh. I want to talk a little bit about this thing. Uh, Elden mentioned about you know creating a prototype and then take take money first and you know and then you sell. It could be a you know a digital product. And then we go into e-commerce. Now some of the folks I, I understand that uh, you guys are startup people and uh, startup is still talking about creating something that's scalable like a mobile app. 
Okay, so for example, for this kind of product, right, what does investor truly look in? I would say there's only three questions that you can really answer, and this, if you got a pen and paper, just write it down. The first thing would be your go-to-market strategy. Now, when I talk about go-to-market strategy, it isn't uh, something to joke about because most of the startup I I can I had experience with talking to them, they have no idea what go-to-market strategy they are using. And let me illustrate this go-to-market strategy. Most of the people they like those uh you know customer base that is uh they call it the winning price of a customer. Say for example, you get a client who's willing to pay you tens of million of dollars if you deliver that one product. Usually these people are you know a uh, corporate companies or maybe you're selling to the government. You already saw the the goal at the end of the tunnel. But usually this sales process take uh. 12 to 16 months for you to actually close such a big deal and most of the time also these guys are looking for credibility they are looking for traction for them to transact that sort of money with you know uh, with a startup so it can be pretty tough uh, think about it this way if you are going for fishing right you're going for fishing for tuna you definitely need a boat to go all the way to the middle of the ocean and start fishing you may land a big tuna you may not even land a tuna at all and here's the part you may not even reach the middle of the sea before you run out of gas so most startups need to know what is the most easiest customer that they can penetrate it could be as easy as you know okay let's forget the boat let's forget all the fancy thing let's just go to get a rod and start fishing in the the edge of the beach so when that when that way you you can immediately get the customer get feedback of the customer and scale from there. Which kind of customer audience would actually uh, buy your product first? That would be the first priority, your go-to-market strategy. And then the second thing that most investors would ask, and you should know this is, uh, Elder mentioned about doing testing and all, this is, uh, this is when you really launch the product. How much does it actually cost to acquire a customer? And yeah, then the next make sure thing, you track that. Yeah. Uh, the next thing you need to ask yourself is how much is this customer worth to you? You know, the average lifetime for this customer. Think about uh, 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 Netflix, right? Netflix. How much does Netflix needs to convince you with their ads, with you know, billboards and stuff that the, these are investment in order to get you to sign up an account? And then from there, if you are paying subscriber and you're happy with the service, you'll be paying months after months and months and they will recover the entire investment from there. So these are the two metrics that is very important. If it costs too much for you to acquire a customer for a specific product, there's only one or two ways you can actually do this. Either increase the cost of the product, you know, or increase the average customer lifetime value. How much would this stick with you throughout so these are the things that you really know if an investor will give you you know throw money onto you right and if you can't answer these two questions they will say oh you don't have a proven business model i can't put in one dollar and get three dollars out and then hence it's not verified so those are the things that uh you you need to know as an entrepreneur you gotta know your numbers yeah yeah i think uh it's all great topics i think uh yeah, I just wanted to uh, do a time check. Yeah, so um, we obviously can go in, into more. But yeah, maybe to, to close things off, like I also wanted to, you know, uh, because you guys shared so much insights on, you know, validating the business model, some of the, the, the real tips in through your, your journey, right? Yeah, I think just two points. I think we can start off with, with um, what are just some of the biggest learnings that, you know, if there's one thing that each of you could share, it could be the same thing, but depending on what you guys share, right? What's, what's the one thing like to people, uh, young people out there, young adults, mm. people, whether they are working in the job or, you know, starting or thinking the start of their business, what's that one thing that you want to share to them? Yeah. Oh, can I? Yeah. Okay. So the most important thing, what I think that might be very helpful to you guys, practical again, yeah, yep. is practice. Now, practice. What sort of practice, mm -hmm. right? You know, actually, we've been starting on being entrepreneurship yeah. ever since we are, what, uh, 10 years old. Technically, we catch insects and try to sell. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that was basically <laughs> what we used to do, catch insects, teachers call us, go to discipline, teachers call us, but basically, we catch we insects making and money sell. back then. Yeah, so actually, this is training. So I'm the biggest ROI, right? Yes. <laughs> wait, wait, because like, there's some interesting backstory here. When Suddenly, when Alden talked about catching insects, like, I think I just thought that 
you know, they were so cool. They know a lot of different insects, you know, different species, which one can sell for a higher price. But I mean, I, I believe, right? I caught so many and then in the end, I couldn't sell. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, that's how we also, you know, got closer to one another. They, they really have strong ac- expertise on, you know, insects and, and back then, nature, back then, back then, fish back then, and yeah. stuff. Yeah. So, but yeah. I mean, uh, coming back to the, practice, the real yeah. practice itself is that you are practicing on your number one sales skills number two on your hustling ability as well so for those people who say oh i want to be entrepreneurship i want to sell 100 million dollars and stuff what what not right but technically have you even sold 10 products really in your life like personally if no then you should start be going on to practice maybe buy some products uh, repackage it and then start signing your family members just try out the process because i believe that you can't jump from somewhere uh you can't you can't jump from zero to ten immediately that is unless you're very lucky it's much more feasible for you to go from zero one two three four five so keep practicing keep practicing small business make uh, 10, make 20, 20, 30, and then move on. Because for those kind of pers- person who go from 0 to 10, right, likely they go from 10 to negative 5 after that. So that is how it is when someone who's not really practicing and became lucky overnight, right? So practicing is very important, and you don't have to spend a lot of money. I mean, you $1,000 you buy from Taobao or 1688 or say Alibaba, you can get a lot of things for 1000 Just start selling, yeah. Sure. I think I just wanted to, you know, quick comment on it. Like, practice sounds, you know, easy, right? I think we, we covered, like, practice makes perfect. Easier said than done. But I really resonate with the fact that, you know, to sell something is actually not that easy. Because it requires getting money from someone. And when you talk about, oh, it, this business idea could be, you know, going to be very big, the dream and everything. But, you know, start selling and validate the idea. You know, start something small, like buy something, like, simple and then sell it at, for a margin see how that will work out for you i ah. think five out like i think 10 like m- most of the time it's very hard to get people to actually buy it right but if you if you are worried right what to sell uh, just copy uh, your competitor <laughs> just find a way to make it better because then they are your teacher you see yeah. Right, you just follow the footsteps. Oh, they yeah. do the website, like also do something very similar, maybe different color, different what. Uh, okay, they sell ABC products. Okay, you also follow ABC products. Then you actually have a model. In the beginning, don't try to beat them, be similar like them, right? And then once you reach into a certain stage, then you start to innovate. Because, like, every all of us learn math from a teacher, right? If I ask you out of nowhere, you never learn math, you go innovate a new math. <laughs> it's difficult. So in the beginning, it's learn how to do math first, then try to innovate from there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For me, uh, the, the way I look at it is, uh, that's why I already mentioned practice. Uh, uh, I would just say one third. Start. That's all. The reason why uh, starting is very important is because, right, uh, you know, most people procrastinate. They procrastinate because they fear something, right? But we all live in the internet world. All you need is just a YouTube video. When we first started, we have no idea about, you know, how how do you calculate, you know, how much does it cost to acquire a customer, how to run Facebook ads, heck, how to even do Shopee, you know, or e-commerce. We have no idea. So we start first when we encounter the problem, treat it like a science experiment watch the youtube video take whatever learnings that you have and immediately execute don't watch another youtube video until you execute this part Mm. you see take that learning and then you continue grow youtube is your companion it's basically your advisor for all the things that you you know encounter problems or you can talk to smart friends who who have been through all these problems and then take that and execute for the next step again and again because you you never go anywhere if you don't start. Like I think you know, uh, Raynard he's you know going to gym all the time. It's like going to gym. You see, if you don't start, you never get anywhere. You gotta keep doing it, and then you know your body adapts to maybe certain workouts. Or, you know you you are better with certain diets and stuff. And then you need to have the discipline to go through it. Uh, what one thing I would uh like to touch upon is like uh having a mentor or being accountable for the things that you do, like. Most people they say they don't pay uh, a mentor. Like they don't pay. Uh, you you can even find a uh, Raynard as a, a mentor for mm-hmm. for workout. They say that uh, it costs it costs thousands of dollars to you know get a mentor. Uh, I wouldn't pay that price. Most people are saying that. But mm. th- 
reframe that mind. Are you willing to pay a thousand dollars to stay fat? It's the same thing, you see. Mm-hmm. You gotta start, and then you gotta find somebody that can actually keep you accountable, and find good friends. And one of the best thing is being in the community where you know like-minded people. They, yeah. they you bounce off ideas. Yeah. You help each other grow and help keep each other accountable. When you know that uh, your part, what you're supposed to do is gonna be contribute to something that you know other people is doing, then you wouldn't want to let them down. That's that. Those those are the best things that I can say if you are just new, but start first. Just yeah. just start. Even if you are young, you see, it's even more crucial that you start young. Why? Because then you build up practice. By the time you are thirties or you are forties, you already accumulate years, tens of years for you to actually start a business. Yeah, yeah. I think these are really. I I won't say. It. It's tough advice. It's actually very crystallized, very simple. Elden is like practice, and then Eddie is like really start. I think starting and practice goes hand in hand in hand, and then yeah, whatever that they've just said, I don't have to elaborate even further. I think it's like clear, yeah, and really surrounding you with different kinds of people that will inspire you, because I think you're only as good as the people around you. Correct. You solve the average of, of of them, yeah. If they're all successful people. And then if you can mix, plan, think like them, and at the same time, I think most importantly is that that is what you want. You feel happy and you know connected being with them. I think I think that's the the most important. Then you automatically you know be a better version of yourself. Whether it's I think this can be applied not just for entrepreneurship. Yeah, it could be applied to your work, your lifestyle, etc. Yeah. One of the things that uh being an entrepreneur, I think we all face it is because uh loneliness. Because loneliness is that you nobody understand why yeah. you are doing this. They, they they look at you sideways. You know, teachers sometimes look at you sideways. You know, lecturers like, why are you doing this? That's why YouTube come into play very well because you can see how successful people think and imagine if you are in the same room with the the people that you are watching the video of how they actually started the business. Maybe even the talk lah, uh, you know, the podcast. You can see, you get insights of how we think or yeah. how uh, other people think. You can integrate that part as you know your own internalization of how you think as well. So, uh, yeah, it's gonna be lonely, but uh, you you have resources. Yeah. Anybody have resources nowadays? Is this how you use it and internalize yeah. it? And just fun fact, I think um, why I'm into investing. Actually, started investing is really from YouTube. I just see, you know, they are successful. Why? Why can't I get my uh, early retirement, financial freedom? But do you feel lonely sometimes? Yeah, when your friends are going out and stuff, and you decided to save that that pocket or that fund for other things. So sometimes it might be lonely. But if you surround with pe- people, the partners that really understand that, I think uh, that makes the whole journey beautiful, right? It's life is full of trade off. Yep. I would say, yes. yeah. So I think with that, I think we. Uh, one last tip for them. Yeah. One practical tip. All go, right. Go so it. for you guys, right? Uh, who wants to become millionaire? I give you a framework on how to become millionaire. Confirm one. Confirm one. <laughs> okay, uh, that's important. All right. Tip, yeah, yeah. Very important. I also, okay. right. also want to hear. So, uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, ready. Uh. Um, for example, a millionaire have at least ten sources of income, right? And nine out of ten businesses fail, right? Correct. Nine out of ten businesses fail. Mm. So you just start 70 businesses, right? Or, right, 70 business, I mean, uh, for example, like if seven uh, average millionaire have seven sources of income and nine out of 10 business fail, you start 70 businesses and you practice all the way. And of course, since nine out of 10, 70 businesses, sure, at least, uh, you know, nine out of 10 business fail, right? So technically 63 of your 70 business will fail, right? Technically, you got seven successful ones. Uh, then you become millionaire already. But I can tell you honestly, if you were to be able to start 70 business and really do it, not say that you start a business today and close the day, the next day, you know, really put your heart and soul in doing these steps uh, to build a business with that 70 business. Honestly, if you... You just start, die. Uh, you know, you just die, uh. no, bro. bro. <laughs> <laughs> if, 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 if you're not successful by then... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, honestly, if you start 20 business and really put your heart and soul in it, I think you're millionaire already. So this is just a, a frame of mind about be- coming back to the practice part, right? If yeah. 9 out of 10 businesses fail, uh, then do 11. Uh. Sure succeed. Uh. <laughs> it's like Elder selling a course, you know? Like, okay, start and practice. Yeah, and that's why I start 70, the framework. And then, yeah, you buy Elder's course. Yeah, so let me wrap things up. I think it's a... Uh, 
Yeah, it's a very interesting one. A, a bit long. So for those of you that are still listening, hopefully you guys really got a lot of uh, insights. I know we're bouncing back and forth a lot of different ideas. I'm not an expert entrepreneurship, but I'm really being a sponge, soaking as much as I can. So if you found that useful, yeah, remember to share, like, subscribe to our YouTube. Check us out on YouTube. You can see the difference of how Eddie and Elden look like. They used to be identical twins. Now they're not so identical twins. But if the first time you see them, they are all actually, you know, uh, actually quite same. Same, same, but different. Yeah, so this is part one about entrepreneurship, their journeys. Would love to actually discuss more. Maybe we get back to you another time. But stay tuned to part two because part two, right, is really more about, you know, their brotherhood. Brotherhood, you know, how they grew up as identical twins. What was that whole experience like, the perspective? Do they share the same girlfriends? I don't know, like the same girls. We can cover all that. So stay tuned for part two. Thank you very much, Eddie Alden, for this. All right, see you guys. Bye bye. By the way, if you guys want to know more as well, what you want to learn, you just put it down in the comments as well. Probably you might be able to come back as well. Yeah, so, sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. See you guys. Bye bye.